Hello folks, Cal Kellogg here. We are on the verge of what promises to be an exceptional river salmon season. There's a ton of fish beyond the Golden Gate. They're moving closer. They're getting bigger. Guys have been getting limits on the salt for more than a week. Um, a lot of those fish are pushing up to about 30 pounds. So there are going to be a lot of fish headed up the rivers this fall. They haven't started arriving yet, but I expect within the next two weeks we're going to see an uptick in the action and uh, it's going to continue right on through the end of the season. It's going to come in spurts. We're going to get a big push probably in September, mid-September through mid-October, but we're still going to be seeing big beautiful chromers show up in Sacramento and beyond all the way to the end of the season. So this is a great time to talk about salmon fishing tactics. We're coming off, you know, last year was pretty good, but we're coming off of a, a slow period in salmon fishing for, for several years. So there were probably quite a few guys out there that don't know the basics of trolling for salmon. And that is the way to go if you're gonna fish the Delta, you're gonna fish the Sacramento River through, through Sacramento city limits, all the way up to Calusa, where that water is fairly placid. It's flowing, but it's fairly placid. It's deep. These are the areas where the average guy can go out without a jet boat, not worry about beaching the boat or hitting a snag or something like that and troll effectively for salmon. So let's go over the basics. Let's talk about the rod, the reel, the line, the end tackle. I'll just give you a thumbnail sketch of how you can go out and effectively troll for salmon throughout the Delta, the Sacramento area, and all the way up probably to Calusa. So start with the rod. I've got an eight foot graphite rod. We'll talk more about the rod in a second. It's kind of a medium power rod. You don't want a super stiff rod. You don't want an ultra light rod. This is basically a striper trolling rod, a striper bait fishing rod. I'll show you the tip in a second. It's got some sensitivity, but it also has a lot of back, a lot of backbone, and it has you know a fairly long handle, so you can you know kind of dig in, fight a fish, put it in a rod holder safely, stuff like that. I've got it topped with a 15 size pen fathom reel. It's just a simple star drag reel. These are some of my staple reels for just kind of all around fishing, halibut, stripers, sturgeon, all that stuff. A line counter reel is preferable if you're gonna get a dedicated salmon fishing outfit, but uh, if you're gonna mix it up, go for different things. A non-line counter like this works just fine. You wanna spool up with 50 to 65 pound test braided line. That line is very thin, it's very low in stretch, gives you a lot of power, a lot of line capacity. It's about the same diameter as 15 pound test mono. So I got a bunch of line on this reel. I'm ready to fight anything. I'm ready to fight a 40 pound salmon or a keeper sturgeon or whatever. So this is just a good all around outfit for anybody who's gonna fish our big rivers, fish the Delta, stuff like that. Let's take a look at the end tackle and then we'll talk about lures. Um, but first, I said we were going to talk about the tip on this rod. And let me kind of step back here and show you the tip of the rod. What you'll see here, I don't know if you can see that. Let me take a quick look here. Yeah, you can see that. So you'll notice, kind of wrapped here. You'll notice, you know, this rod, it has some sensitivity in the tip. And that's important because when your lure is working, in the water, you want to see it on the rod tip. You want to see that vibration. So that's very important. That's how you know if you've got a weed. That's how you know if your lure is working. If you're moving fast enough forward as you troll, you want to see those vibrations on the rod tip. So it's important to have a sensitive tip and you, you know, you want a little softness in it because you want, when a salmon hits, you want them to be able to maul the bait just for a second. And that tip provides that cushion. But as you can see, it's a very fast action rod and it's backed up with backbone. So that's kind of what you're looking for. You don't want a pool cue. You want to be able to see that lure working and you want the salmon to be able to draw that tip down a little bit before he comes, you know, fast to the rod. That allows him to get that lure back in his mouth, regardless of whether you're using a brads, a spinner, a flatfish, whatever it is. You want him to get that in his mouth before he really starts to get resistance. So. Anyway, sensitive tip, plenty of backbone. And an eight foot rod is nice. An eight foot rod, if you're fishing out of a boat, even if you're fishing out of a kayak, it gives you a lot of leverage on the fish. It gives you a lot of lift when you get ready to set the hook, if you're gonna set a hook. Um, it's, it's just, it's, just the, it's the right size. Seven footers will work, eight footers are better. So this is a eight foot, as I said, eight foot graphite stick. So I've got it coming down to, pull off a little line here. I've got it coming down to a basic 
three-way rig, which is what you're going to want to use for trolling the delta, for trolling the river through Sacramento. I've got the, uh, the braided line right here. Comes down to a three-way swivel. I've got that knotted onto that eye of the swivel. Um, the mono over here, this is 25 pound P-Line CXX in moss green. You can use fluorocarbon. Salmon aren't line shy, plus it's an aggression strike. They're not striking to feed. They're striking because the lure is annoying them. So, you know, line visibility, not a huge issue. So I'm using the moss green CXX. Very abrasion resistant, very strong lines, good stuff. Uh, my second choice would be Trilene Big Game Line. It's very similar to the P-Line CXX. Very abrasion resistant, very tough stuff. You're gonna be fishing this down on the bottom of the river where there's rocks and you know logs and stuff like that potentially. So you need some abrasion resistance and you know you need a you need a lot of power. So enough said there. I've got the braid coming down to a three-way. I've got a dropper that's probably I don't know, close to a foot long, and the dropper is tipped with just a snap. Not a snap swivel, a snap. We want to keep it simple, so right there. And then off the third eye, we've got about 48 inches of leader, and that comes down to just a lock snap right there. Not a snap swivel again, a lock snap. We've got all the swivel we need in that three-way these are just for making the connections and you want a good size, good quality lock snap. Now, you could tip this rig with a flat fish, with a Brad's rotating bait, or with a spinner. Here's how you're gonna get it to the bottom. You're gonna take your sinker and you're gonna attach it to that dropper right here. I got one in my pocket. This is, uh, what is this? This is a six ouncer, which is pretty common. You're gonna be using weights anywhere from say two to six ounces, something like that. So go ahead, snap that weight on there. What you're gonna do with this rig, is you're gonna get the boat moving forward against the current. You could be going with the current, but you're gonna have to troll faster. Better to troll into the current or zigzag up, up river into the current. You're gonna spool this back slowly. You don't just wanna drop it because everything's gonna tangle up. That weight's gonna be down like that. Your lure's gonna be trailing out over here, you know, and it's gonna be working in that current. You wanna lower this to the bottom gradually until you feel that sinker just tick the bottom and then crank up about a half a turn. So you want the, the lure working within about 24 inches of the bottom, something like that, very close to the bottom. But you don't wanna be dredging the bottom. You don't wanna be up in the middle of the water column, that's not gonna work. You wanna be near the bottom, but you don't wanna be you know, dragging your stuff through the rocks. You're gonna snag, you're gonna get leaves and debris on your lure, and that's not gonna work very well for you. So that's kind of the name of that tune. Now, in terms of lures, as I said, the Brad's rotating baits work well, uh, flatfish work well, and spinners work exceptionally well. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of different spinners on the market. My hands down choice is the Yakima Bait Bob Toman spinners. The quality on these things is through the roof. Uh, Bob Toman is a, is a Northwest guide was on the water for decades and he kept tweaking spinner blades and his theory was a spinner blade you know they'll all catch fish but if you can hit that certain tone that just irritates those salmon it's gonna work better and uh, he worked on this particular blade for a long time and he came up with the thump that he felt and you know years of experience on the water that he felt worked the best well Yakima Bates taking that blade taking his design and they've taken it to the next level they use a special brass alloy it's very tarnish resistant it doesn't you know it isn't as effective by electrolysis um, they put UV powder coated paint on it. It's a very durable finish. They come in great salmon catching colors. They have that rigid piece of tubing there that always keeps the hook in position. Now, I've heard some guys talk about tipping their spinners and stuff like that. It's not necessary. Go ahead, put some Procure on the backside of that blade, some Procure on the beads, and you are ready to fish. You don't need a flasher. You don't need a dodger. You don't need any of that stuff 
You just need to slow troll up the river. You need to know that that blade is going whoop, 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 whoop in the current, and you are fishing. Check your depth occasionally. Watch your fish finder. If you see that it goes from 25 feet to 30 feet, you got to put out more line. If you see that you know you're in 25 feet and all of a sudden it's coming up to 18, you got to work your gear. You got to shorten up. So Toman spinners, they're exceptional. I'll show you one in the package. They look like that. I guess I had that upside down. They look like that. You can find them at sporting goods stores all over, anywhere that carries Yakima bait products. Um, these are deadly. I've caught fish on these things from California to Alaska. I've fished every major river system, including the Columbian, and these things are widely used simply because they work. And if you forget, forget how I told you to rig them, there's a little diagram on the back. But anyway, you could substitute the spinner for a flatfish, for a Brad's rotating bait, but uh, man, I, I've just seen so many nice fish caught on spinners, just a naked spinner like that, that uh, I have a lot of confidence in that presentation. Couple final words. So we're gonna be trolling along. I'm already snagged. You know me, I'm always snagged. <laughs> so we're gonna be trolling along and uh, make sure you can see the tip there. We're gonna be trolling along. You're gonna see that spinner working against the rod tip, something like that. So you know the spinner's working, that's great, it's doing its thing, you've been controlling the depth, you know you're near the bottom, and all of a sudden you're gonna see some action like this. You're just gonna see it draw it down, okay? Resist the urge to grab the rod out of the rod holder. Just keep trolling forward or give the throttle a little, just a little shot of power. Use the boat to hook the fish, but make sure that you can really see the salmon, the weight of the fish, you know, really laying on the tip of that rod. Then goose the throttle a little bit, and that's just gonna pull, it's gonna pull those barbs right into the fish's mouth. Those are needle sharp hooks on that spinner, and uh, you're gonna have a big smile on your face because you're gonna have a big old king on the end of your line. So anyway, if you're planning on trolling for salmon in the Delta, Sacramento city limits, all the way up river to Calusa, those are the basics. It's up to you to get out there, put in your time, work the areas where the fish are moving through. And go get them, guys. You're never going to have a better opportunity to whack salmon in Sacramento city limits than you are this season. There's a bunch of fish. They're big. They're beautiful. They're chrome. Go get them. I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm signing off. I'll catch you next time. I hope this tip helps you put a big old salmon in your boat. And uh, I'll see you here soon. Anyway, I got some chores to do, guys. I'm signing off. You have a great day.